Hello, I'm your host Quexo and today we'll be talking about the most controversial show release this season being Gushing Over Magical Girls. A really spicy show if I can say so for myself. I will try to dissect my thoughts about it and talk about what I liked about it and the problems I had with it. There will be spoilers for the anime adaptation so I will try to keep them subtle but I can't really promise a lot. Well then let's get started shall we? Ah, and one more thing, don't, and I really mean don't watch it at home with speakers on, even with your family at dinner, watch it in your room, alone, with headphones on, just saying, and if you don't want to have a lot of explaining to do, and I mean fuck ton of explaining, and I would appreciate it if you watched it before listening to me ramble onto it, so yeah, well then, let's go. Compared to the other show, this one has a quite a simple premise. Firstly, we have our main protagonist, Hiragi Utena, a high school girl with the mad love for magical girls, adoring Tress Magia recently, which is a group of magical girls protecting the town Utena is residing in. Then one day, Utena is being scouted by Nalita, the evil organization's Normita's mascot transforming into what she thought was a magical girl, just to be disappointed and confused about the outfit. Well, it's true, cause it is the outfit for the leaders for the forces of evil. So yeah, being confronted by the magical girls who sense her presence, Utena is thrown into the battle versus her beloved magical girls. Utena unexpectedly feels pleasure instead of remorse while battling the magical girls, giving them pain and playing the role of the sadistic villain and getting off of it. While funnily enough, the magical girl she's fighting with is getting off for the wrong reason of being surprisingly masochistic, meaning submissive and enjoying the pain. <laughs> yep, it is that kind of show. And the way it is fleshed out, well, it's way too detailed. So it is not recommended for everyone, plus the characters are depicted as little girls, so yep, people can get and will get the wrong idea. The next point is that I understand that in the battle the clothes get ripped apart, I mean, it is understandable, having such skimpy clothes as well, it's no wonder. Still, while I like how deep the show is, no pun intended, if I compare it how it was portrayed in the manga, I can only say the manga scenes were more tactful and the animators in the anime series gone more into the R-rated route. Because in the manga you cannot see the private parts of the private parts, but in the anime version, well, that is for you to judge. Well, it's true that I have to say the animators did a great job at making it a quality action, comedy and edgy show, even when the priorities of the animators gone into the cultured section. Quote unquote, they still did what was needed for the fighting sequences too. Even when they had uh, no hand-to-hand -hand combat, what was shown in the fighting scenes uh, should satisfy us for the most part. And after that we got, well, yeah, <laughs> Utena and her gang doing her bullying. Utena at the end of the second episode chooses her own villain alias of Beza, which came from Old French or Latin, meaning to kiss or like to fuck over someone, like Utena did in the second episode with Azur. Slowly, Utena gets to know more magical girls and girls of the evil organization and Ormita. We can see how her love for the magical girls gets twisted more and more, but at the same time becoming even more pure. Because that is what she wants in the end. She wants the magical girls to be even stronger, even braver and even more iron-willed. Not breaking under any circumstances, that is a part of her self-proclaimed reason as to why she is bullying them into the tears. But as said before, and as we've seen with her fight with Azur, the moment Azur broke down, the moment Azur wanted to submit to Bazer. Well, that was the moment when Bazer threw her broken toy away. Cause, as explained before, she does not want a submissive magical girl. She wants a magical girl to be a shining beacon of hope, showing us that they, as pure as they are, leading the fight against the force of evil, shall never break under any circumstances. Because that is her self-proclaimed role, which Utana imposes upon herself, is to be the best 
villain the magical girls could get to help them grow, so when Bazer breaks Azure, she was literally pissed off, cause how could she give up so easily? She was mad with anger and disappointment in Azure at the same time. Still, later on, Utena finds out that Azure made a comeback and is stronger than ever before. Happy that Azure is not totally broken down, this is the main driving point for Utena, now that she is forced to walk down this path. Surprisingly, Utena is not as dense as you would think, and even when her mind is full of perverted thoughts at the moment, it feels like Utena has an inkling that Vanilita is planning something big and bad, and she knows that she, Utena, or Major Baser, will be at the center of the plan. Well, there are some plot holes like when Leber Blume was caged by Nero Ellis, she could have used her shadows to get out of Baser's shadow, and if we watch more we can find more of such plot holes, but that's not really the main point I wanted to make this video about. From what we have seen in the series, it feels like it's just a slice of life show with a slow build up, which I'm all in for, because the last time we got an interesting Magical Girls show was Magical Destroyers, with the pacing which was all over the place, so there is sometimes no reason to go meta and having a slow build up with slice of life elements and not making it overly complicated is really enough most of the time. We get the motivations of all the characters slowly being introduced to us throughout the whole story. The backstory of some of the characters as to why they are magical girls or villains can be silly for some and deep for the others. The part which I am curious about is how it will continue. I did read two more manga chapters so I could be caught up with the release of the last anime episode, so currently, as quote unquote anime only for the series, I definitely say that it's interesting. The the story is more of embracing our inner self than the fan service which we got, like the warp low in between Azure and Bazer, or Utena and the Magical Girls, each character has a quirk or a gimmick which we can categorize uh, them under, like Alice wanting to have some playmates while cherishing her toys, she does evil stuff only cause for her it is just playing villain and not being a villain, like in theater. As for Kiwi, it is literally just as simple that she was pissed off cause Shres Magia was getting more attention than her online. So Kiwi hates them. When Elita picked that off and scouted her like in a speech run under 30 seconds. Sulfur of Trust Magia was scouted by Azura and Magenta when she fought off a villain of an Ermita in the back streets. As for Magenta and Azur, Azur wanted to sacrifice herself to save a little girl and Magenta, there is uh, nothing that we know about that. Then we have Loco Musica and Leber Blume, which well, Loco wants to be an idol and somehow got swept into it and Leber Blume wanting to follow Loco whenever she goes was a no brainer. So more or less you can see, the thing is that in the last episodes that aired we could see the members of Tresmagia getting some ill kinks onto the identities of the villains. Like Azur getting a massage from Utena feeling the same was as if it was done by a baser, I mean the feeling, you know, you get it. Magenta seeing the toys from Alice wrecking havoc in the vicinity by Nero Alice. As for Surfer, we saw nothing. It's just that her and Kiwi's personalities don't really mesh with each other and when they are, you know, in a casual form, they just bicker with each other, so maybe that similar feeling could get across. So that were my thoughts onto the show. Overall, I was surprised when I seen Chibi Reviews make a video onto it. I had no plans to watch it before, so I gave it a go. Not disappointed and having a fair bit of fun with the series, I gotta say. The animators and the voice actors are carrying the series as a whole. <laughs> But the source material is really well made, so following it should have made it a, a lot easier for them. I can only wish that the author of the manga series makes a fast recovery and that we get a season 2 later down the line. Even if it's uh, not a series for everyone, it is a real well made magical girls show with a bit of too much fan service. The thirsty animators could have made it easily without making it that, you know, R rated, lol. 
Still, the slice of life aspect is really nice, the color palette and the animation make the show appealing to watch. The sound effects and the music goes hard at moments, I mean really hard, like using trumpets, drums and rock guitars, and the chills with goosebumps I get when I see Bazer's face that she makes. Oh my, when Utena is being hater and ass or thinking about revenge is like so cool, I'm totally gushing over that one. Ahem. <laughs> Well then that should cover it more or less, give it a go if you don't mind the R-rated fan service. Thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe and I wish you all to stay in good health. Goodbye!